And now, an Etsy holiday gifting mission. Today's episode, Operation Delivered on Time. Here's the situation. The holidays are coming up, which means you're on a mission to buy handcrafted gifts. But you're worried they may not be delivered on time, so you need peace of mind if something goes wrong with your delivery. Impossible, right? Not this year, because you're shopping for gifts on Etsy. Etsy is where everyone can find handmade items from independent shops. It's also the place where you know your gifts will be delivered by the seller's estimated delivery date or your money back. Whether you're searching for handmade home pieces like serveware, cutting boards, and throw pillows, or personalized items like necklaces, hand handbags and seasonal jackets. Etsy has it and has your back if something goes wrong with delivery. New to Etsy? Use the code HOLIDAY10 for 10% off your first purchase. That's code HOLIDAY10. Maximum discount value of $50 expires December 31st, 2023. See terms at etsy.com slash terms. To claim refunds, see requirements and exclusions at etsy.com slash legal slash buyers. Etsy has it. Shop etsy.com. Shop the Plato's Closet Black Friday event in North Charleston and West Ashley and let the deals begin. You know Plato's Closet always has a huge selection of trendy recycled styles at amazing prices, but Black Friday deals are different. They're better. We've been holding back some of our best inventory, and you won't want to miss our Black Friday event. Save on gently used styles from Patagonia, Lululemon, Lily Pulitzer, and hundreds of popular brands. Plato's Closet is ready to let the Black Friday deals begin. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. No one comes into the world by choice. No one has a voice in this momentous decision. No one asks to be born. Pushed by the mother, pulled by the doctor, the brand new being is introduced to his life. There is a highly respected theory that all later anxieties reproduce the trauma of this first bloody battle, the one called birth, the one from which no one emerges without wounds. This has a logical sound to it, and for all I know, it's true. I am youth. I am beauty. I am a creative person. I am light and love and everything harmonious. I am in tune with the universe. I am everything that is good. I am that truly remarkable human being, myself. A precious thing to be. Separate and unique. I am a goddess. Our mystery drama, I Pronounce You Dead, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Morgan Fairchild. It is sponsored in part by X Lax and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It's a Midwestern town, neither very large nor very small. Its citizens, for the most part, are neither very rich nor very poor. They would call themselves comfortable, and so they are. So are their homes. And it's in one of these homes that we begin our story. My name is Helen Todd. I live in this big old white house with my mother and my father and my brother, Kevin. I'm finishing up my last year in high school. Right now I'm dating Billy Masters, who is tall and good-looking, captain of the football team. I was nominated to be president of my class. Even though I didn't win, it's obvious that I'm popular and well-liked. But is all this important, really? I mean, I don't take any of it seriously because the minute I graduate, I am going to cut out of here and become an actress. And my whole life will change. And nobody knows I'm going to do this. Not my father or my mother or Kevin or or even Billy. No one. But I know it. And I know it will be wonderful. That's your father. I heard his key in the lock. 
Put the roast on the table. Why can't Kevin do something? Oh, he's out back fixing his motorcycle. He never does anything. Now, that'll be just about enough out of you, young lady. Dinner's on the table, Daddy, practically. Well, how's my girl? Okay. Kevin? Come inside, dinner. Mm, uh, roast beef, huh? And corn on the cob. Coming through. Hello, dear. Have a good day? So-so. Uh, where's Kevin? Oh, working on his precious motorcycle. Uh, sometimes I'm sorry we bought him that thing. Oh, there you are, Kevin. Hi, right, dinner ready? Sit down. Oh, before you sit down, get the phone, will you? It's not for me. Now, how do you know? Kevin, get it anyway. Okay. You never want to do anything. No, no, no. He gets everything he wants and he never has to do anything. Well, he's a boy. Kevin, hurry up before everything gets cold. Start carving, dear. And Helen, pass the coin. I told you it wasn't for me. Well, who's it for? You, your highness. Oh. Oh, excuse me, I'd better answer it. It's old creepy Billy Masters. Billy? Helen? How do you think? Uh, hi, uh, this is Billy. I know. Um, uh, Helen, I, I called you because, um, well, uh, y you know the big dance Saturday night? What about it? Well, I, uh, you see, I, um... Uh, we are going, aren't we? That, well, that, that, that's why I called you. Uh, turns out I can't. Can't what? Can't take you. Why not? Um, uh, well, see, I, I haven't been feeling so good, and my mother says... Well, what's the matter with you? Uh, well, nobody knows yet. The doctor isn't sure. Billy, I bought a new dress. What am I supposed to do? We can get somebody else to take you. Well, everybody's got a date by now. Helen, I'm, I'm, I'm awfully sorry. Never mind. Just never mind. Oh. Helen? You coming back to eat? Everything's getting cold. Tell Billy you'll oh. call him back, dear. Yes? Oh, uh, Mr. Smith? This is Helen Todd. I, I have to see you. It's terribly important. Right now? Uh, well, after dinner, if that's all right with you. In about an hour. Yes, that would be fine. I'll see you then. The door will be open. Walk right in. Oh, thank you, Mr. Smith. Helen? Yes, I, I have to go out right after dinner. Where to? None of your business. Helen, don't be rude. Where are you going? I, I have to see a friend. Oh, somebody we know? Well, no, I don't think so. It's somebody I just met myself a short while ago. Uh, would you pass the corn, please? Mr. Smith? In here, Helen. Come on in. How are you? Uh, all right, I guess. You're disturbed about something. I can see that. Well, yes, I am. Well... Tell me about it. That's what I'm here for. I know. You told me. Sit down. My attention is all yours. Well, Mr. Smith, Why I... Why don't you call me Caesar? Caesar? It's my name. You're my friend, and all my friends call me Caesar. I, I haven't known you for very long. Do you really believe that? I just met you last week. Don't you feel that we have known each other forever? Since the beginning of time, or before that? In a way, I, I guess I do. You remember when we met? Physically met, I mean. Well, yes, that's why I... I told you about the group mind feeling. Do you have that feeling? I think I'm beginning to. That's why I called you. And in the group mind, we are all one. Yes. Yes, I believe that. Therefore, it must follow that you and I have known each other forever. Must it not? I guess so. You must not guess. You must know. You must feel. You must believe. Otherwise... I do. I know. I, I feel. I believe. I do. I speak of the higher mind, of course. Not the minuscule part of the mind which deals with multiplication tables and the dates of treaties and wars and such trivia. I know, I know, really, I do. And this higher mind has a center, a core of magnetic power. I know. Which can be animated into creative action. Yes, I know, it. and when I'm an actress... This center of dynamic power can be charged precisely as a battery can be charged with cosmic magnetism. Oh, yes. A magnetic field which can attract into your orbit... The money you want, the love you desire, the friendships you seek, 
the work you aspire to, and all the mental, material, and spiritual treasures you yearn for. Oh, I believe that. I do. I do believe it. Are you sure? Are you sure you truly believe it? Yes. Yes, I do believe it. To the depths of your soul? Yes. Then why are you here? Because... Because I, I can't believe it all the time. Things happen. What happens? People do things. They hurt my feelings. What people? Oh, my mother, my brother, even my father. and Now, Billy. Billy? Billy Masters. We've been going steady, and tonight he called me and told me he couldn't take me to the dance Saturday night because he's sick or something, which I can't believe for one minute because I saw him at school today and he looked fine, and it's too late now for anybody else to ask me, and I have a new dress that I bought especially, and... Well, anyway, when he told me, that's when I called you. Because your great faith, your great belief wasn't so strong anymore. It was wavering. It needed reinforcement. Yes. Yes, is that possible? It can be done. Can you? Will you do it? I can. I will. Oh, please. Please, it was such a beautiful feeling when I believed. I loved everyone. I was in love with everyone. I even loved myself. I loved the world. Look deep into my eyes. Are you going to hypnotize me? I'm going to make you believe. Call it telepathic hypnosis, if you like. Now, look into my eyes. I'm looking. Give me all your attention. Listen to what I am saying. And repeat my words. Yes, I will. I am Helen Todd. I am Helen Todd. I am youth. I am beauty. I am a creative person. I am youth. I am beauty. I am a creative person. I am light and love and everything harmonious. I am in tune with the universe. I am light and love and everything harmonious. I am in tune with the universe. I am everything that is good. I am everything that is good. I am that truly remarkable human being, myself, a precious thing to be, separate and unique. I am that truly remarkable human being, myself, a precious thing to be, separate and and unique. Separate and unique. I am a goddess. I am a goddess. How do you feel, Helen? It's come back. What's come back? That feeling. Tell me about it. I feel... I feel as though I could reach out and touch the air. Is it a good feeling? Oh, yes. Would you call it... What would you call it? Happiness and... No, 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 it's more. It's it's joy, rapture, ecstasy. Will it stay with me? For always the feeling? It may have to be renewed from time to time. Nothing lasts forever. Will you renew it for me? Of course. What if you're not here? What if I can't come to see you? It's not absolutely necessary. I could produce the same state of consciousness if I were a thousand miles away. I could produce it over the telephone. You mean that, really? You could you could do it over the telephone? Call it traveling clairvoyance. Call it astral projection. Call it what you will. So long as it produces the altered state of consciousness. That's all this is? What I feel? Just a, an altered state of consciousness? Like falling asleep. Another altered state. Oh, it's, it's much more than that. It's much better. I feel so strong. Oh, Mr. Smith, I can't thank you enough. No thanks are due and none expected. But I've been a nuisance. I've taken up so much of your time. Wait. You're not leaving. Oh, well, I think I should. What about young... What's his name? Young Masters. Billy? Yes. What about him? I, I don't know. Do you propose to leave him in peace? I don't know what to do exactly. I, there's nothing I can do. Nothing? Nothing I can think of. 
But he has disturbed the peace and quiet of your existence, has he not? Well, he did, but I feel all right now. I feel wonderful. Until he disturbs your tranquility again. Well, I... Do you think he should be allowed to do this? I... I, I don't know. You do. You do. But there's nothing I... There's something. A curse. A blast. You mean... Like, like a, a hex? I mean, I've heard of... Call it what you will, but I assure you, Helen... A hex or a curse or a blast can only be brought down upon a person who deserves it. It cannot be used promiscuously. Those who make trouble for others deserve what they get. I'm trying... Have you ever heard of the Fellowship of Ancient Mind? It is 6,000 years old. And the arch-druid Tyron... That you, Helen? Yes, Daddy. Oh, it's kind of late, isn't it? Oh, it's only 10 o'clock. Well, have a good time with your friend? Yes, Daddy. Oh, that's good. Is going to bed now? Yes, Daddy. Well, uh, sleep well. You too. Oh, great Archdruid. Great Tyron. Hear me. I want to invoke a curse against one Billy Masters who richly merits punishment and who knows in his heart he merits it and in the dark recesses of his mind is waiting for it and longing for it. Oh, great Tyron. I spoke to the great archdruid Tyron for nearly an hour. By then it was very late. And I got undressed and went to bed. I myself believe there are those who invite punishment. Among them are those who seek suicide in drugs or the rash, incontinent behavior that drugs induce. Then there are others who do not resort to drugs to bring about their own destruction, but slowly, quietly with a plodding sort of determination, subject themselves to humiliation and defeat. I shall continue with Act Two in a few moments. Our little heroine, Helen Todd, 18-year-old high school student and aspiring actress has been wounded sorely by her boyfriend, Billy Masters. Seeking relief from her hurt, she has gone to see an older man, Caesar Smith, who has produced in her an altered state of consciousness, whose chief trait is a feeling of great power. Close upon this, he has tutored her in the ways of the fellowship of ancient mind and the great archdruid, Tyron. <laughs> O oh, great Tyron, hear me. O oh, holy and revered Archdruid, I invoke a blast against Billy Masters, who richly deserves punishment, who knows he deserves it, who in the dark recesses of his mind is waiting for it and longing for it. I spoke to the great Archdruid Tyron for nearly an hour. By then it was very late and I got undressed and went to bed. But I, I couldn't go to sleep. I stared up into the dark. I was sure now that I would be a famous actress. I repeated the words Caesar Smith had taught me. I am youth. I am beauty. I am a creative person. I am light and love and everything harmonious. I am that truly remarkable human being, myself, separate and unique. I am a goddess. I remembered the first time I'd been on a stage. It was a morality play in the sixth grade. I played the part of cheerfulness who introduces the little girl to all her feelings, good and bad, and explains them to her. Everybody clapped hard when the play was over. And then somebody shoved me on the stage to take a bow by myself. 
I was so surprised. I was so embarrassed. I, I was so exalted all at the same time. But afterwards, at home... Boy, did you look stupid. Stupid, but... Dumb grin on your face. I laughed fit to butt. Kevin, leave your sister alone. But Mother didn't really stick up for me. She never did. Just because Kevin was older and a boy. My mother didn't like girls, I don't think. I mean, anyway, she never really liked me. Not really. Like when she made me that blue taffeta dress. Stand still, Helen. What's this? Oh, it's some plant I had left over. I thought we'd make a sign. I hate it. I hate the whole thing. It doesn't fit. It makes me look dumpy. Helen. I, I've worked a week on this Well, place. I hate it. Is that the thanks I get? Work and slave and go without. And that's my thanks? You're selfish, Helen, and you're thoughtless. I never liked that dress. I never liked any of the dresses she made me, but I never told her so again. And when I got to high school, she let me buy my own. Well, I don't see why, Mother. I, I think the dresses you make are pretty. It's just not worth it. She doesn't like anything. And I have to put up with her complaining. Mm, store clothes. And with will... my heart, the way it is, I just can't do it anymore. Oh, well. All right, then. It wasn't for my sake. It was for hers that I got to buy my own clothes. I thought about the pretty beige lace with the black velvet butterflies that was hanging in the closet. I'd saved and saved out of my allowance to buy that dress to wear Saturday night. Now Billy Masters had spoiled everything. I, uh, I can't take you, Helen. I, I see, I haven't been feeling so good. My mother says, uh, well, well, the doctor isn't sure, but... I felt as though I'd never get to sleep. Never. So I got out of bed and went into the bathroom and opened the medicine chest. There were a whole bunch of pills. Kevin's antihistamines, Mother's Digitox, and for a heart, and... Yes, these must be Daddy's. Some sleeping pills. I took one. Then I took another, just to be sure. And I went back to my bedroom and looked out the window. I could see Kevin's motorcycle in the backyard. The moon was shining on the handlebars. How he loved that motorcycle. So proud of it, sitting on his damn cycle. He thought he was some kind of king or something. I went and laid down on the bed and stared at the dark. I'd never even had a bicycle. I mean, Daddy had promised me one, but Mother talked him out of it. She can talk him out of anything. He shouldn't give in to her the way he does. I mean, he should have known how much I wanted a bicycle and not let her talk him out of it. He gives in to her about everything. Because she has a bad heart. Her heart isn't that bad that he has to give in to her about everything, but he does. Like the bicycle. I don't think he loves me at all. Not the way he loves her. <laughs> I didn't know how I got there, but there I was, in the kitchen, standing there, opening the drawer where the knives are kept. I picked the sharpest knife I could find and went outside. There was Kevin's motorcycle, gleaming and perfect. It looked like a throne, and I hated it. I hated it, and I took the knife. The seat of the motorcycle was blue and white leather, all shiny and new and perfect. And I slashed at it with the knife. I slashed it then from the front and then the back and the sideways and the stuffing came out and I was what slashing. What do you think you're doing? You're... With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. You're, are you nuts? You are. You're nuts. No. Give me the knife. No, I won't. Stay away from me. Helen. I was back in the kitchen and I've never felt so sure of myself. The knife was in my hand and all of a sudden there was my mother. She just walked in and was standing there. She looked... She looked very calm and cool as though nothing had happened. Helen? Mother? What are you doing with that knife, Helen? 
That's my best carving knife. What are you doing with it? I cut up Kevin's motorcycle. You what? What did you say about the knife? I cut up Kevin with it. There's Kevin now. Do you know what this rotten kid has done, Mother? You deserved it. You asked for it. My motorcycle. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Now, Helen, just shut up and leave me alone. I didn't know I could do it, but I did. I, I didn't know I was so strong. I brought the knife down on Kevin. He put his hands up to stop me, but it, it didn't do any good. I, I didn't even feel him. I just kept stabbing at him and stabbing and stabbing. And I heard my mother calling me screaming wildly. She was screaming, screaming, and then Kevin fell down. <laughs> you killed him. Your brother, Helen. You killed your brother. Oh, Helen. Helen. <laughs> me, and then she stopped, and her face got white, and she grabbed at her chest, and she swayed back and forth, and she reached for the table, but she couldn't reach it, and she fell down. I looked at Kevin with all the blood coming out of him, and I looked at my mother, all pale and still. I didn't feel powerful anymore. All my strength had gone out of me. After a little while, I, I knew what I had to do. I had to call Caesar Smith and have him fix everything back to what it had been before. I am Helen Todd. I am youth. I am beauty. I am light and love and everything that's harmonious. I'm, I am everything that is good. I am that truly remarkable human being myself, a precious thing, a separate and unique. And I am a goddess. A goddess. Mr. Smith, it's me. It's Helen Todd. You know, you remember what you said before that I didn't have to come see you, that you could do it over the telephone? Alter my state of, state of consciousness, you remember? Well, I, I need it now because I'm losing it. I, I'm going back. I'm, I'm getting confused and I don't know what to do because I've, I've killed my brother and my mother is dead too. She had a heart attack when she saw what I'd done. You see, she loved my brother and when I stabbed him, she had a heart attack. And, and they're both lying on the floor here. And I have to bring them back to life. I have to... I have to stop Kevin's bleeding. I, I have to get my mother's heart pills. They're upstairs on me. On me. I, I can't move. All my strength has gone out of me. I tried saying those words you taught me, but it's not enough. It's just not enough. And I think if you could put me back where I was before, I could save them because I do love them. You see, I really do love them. And I want them to be alive. And I'm sure I could do it if only you'd... Wait. Wait a minute. I, I hear something. Wait. Mr. Smith, it's my father's key in the lock. I have to hang up now because he'll come out in the kitchen. He always does, and he's going to see what I've done. I'm hanging up now. Daddy? Daddy, that you? It's me. I'm home. Uh, where are you, in the kitchen? Don't come out here. Why not? Because I'm, I'm, I'm fixing you something, something special. Oh? What's that? Something, uh, a special drink. Oh? Uh, you stay right there, and I'll bring it to you. Well, hurry up. My mind was working like lightning. Like terrible swift lightning. I, I feel the kettle. I got out the tea. And the brandy. And then I took the sleeping pills out of my pocket. Very carefully, I I broke them open. One by one. All of them. And I put the contents into a cup. Helen! Yes, Daddy? Where's your mother? I don't know, Daddy. Where's Kevin? I don't know. Nobody home? Nobody. Except me. And you. Me and you, Daddy. The water was boiling by now, and I poured some into the cup. And added the brandy. Almost ready! Good. I stirred it and stirred it. I even took a little taste of it, just to be sure. The tea was strong, and with the brandy... You'd never know there were 22 sleeping pills in the cup. I put the cup and its saucer on a little tray, and I took it into the living room. Well, well, well. What have we here? Tea. Oh, tea. Tea with brandy. Uh, just the thing for a cold day. Aren't you going to drink it? Where's yours? Oh, I didn't want any. Well, I don't want to drink alone. Oh, well, you go ahead. I, I really don't want any. Have mine. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, I, I really don't want it. Sure you do. Daddy, I really, I don't. It's for you. I'll go out in the kitchen and make myself a cup. You take this one. No, no, that's not, no, that's not the way it's supposed to be. I... Why not? Why not, Eldon? Here, take the mm -mm. tea. 
You deserve it. No. Honey. Go on. Take it. You want it. Take it. No, I it. don't sure want it. You do. No, I, I don't. I want you to have it, Ellen. No. I want you to have it. No. Come on, now drink it. That's my good girl. Drink it down. Drink it. Oh. I've never tried it, but murder can't be easy. Of course, the thesis of this drama is that there are some people who invite all sorts of disasters upon themselves, even death by violence. The unproved thesis is that these people, the world's masochists, bring these things upon themselves. But do they really consent to being slaughtered? What happens when they decide not to be murdered and turn upon the murderer? I shall come back shortly to you with Act Three. Humiliated by being rejected by her boyfriend, Billy Masters, our young heroine, Helen Todd, has invoked a curse upon him. She then attacked her brother, Kevin, with a knife. Her mother, entering upon the bloody scene, succumbs to a heart attack. Close upon this, Helen's father comes home. But before she can be found out, Helen prepares a cup of tea for him, into which she puts the contents of 22 sleeping pills. This she offers to her unsuspecting parent. Or does he suspect? Take the tea, Ellen. No. You want it. Take it. No, I don't want it. Sure you do. No. I want you no. to have it, Ellen. Come now. Drink it at no. my good girl. Down. Oh. Helen, baby, wake up, honey. It's Daddy. You can't make me. You wake can't. up, wake up, honey. It's no. Daddy. Daddy, I don't want it. Don't give it to me. I won't. I won't. Oh, oh, Daddy. Oh, you had a dream, sweetheart. No, no, it happened. No, no, nothing happened except you had a very bad no, dream. It, it did. Well, I did it. You did. I did. You, you did what? It was Kevin's bicycle. His motorcycle. His motorcycle. I took a knife. That, that's how it all started. What? What started? I cut up his motorcycle. I slashed the seat of Kevin's motorcycle, but he caught me. Now, now, Kevin's motorcycle is just fine. No, he caught me, and I ran into the house, and he came after me, and then I slashed him. I slashed him, and he fell down. He was all bloody, and then Mother came in, and she saw him on the floor, and, and she saw him, and, and she screamed, and she came towards me, and I was going to do something to her, but she had a heart attack. She fell down, too, and then you came home. Oh, no, I've been here all the time, honey. I didn't want you to see the, them dead on the floor in the kitchen, so I made you some tea, and I put all the sleeping pills in the tea and some brandy. And I, I took it to you, but you wouldn't drink it. You tried to make me drink it, and I didn't want to, but I started to... I, I was going to drink it, but something happened. You screamed, baby. You, you woke yourself up. You see, you woke yourself up out of a bad dream. No, it wasn't a dream. It was real. It happened. Now, Helen. It did. I know it happened. Oh, Daddy. After I killed Kevin and Mother, I telephoned Caesar Smith. I felt so awful. I wanted to save him. Oh, no. See, I thought that if I could stop the bleeding, I'd, I'd get Mother's digitoxin pills, the pink ones. That way I could save him. But I, I didn't feel strong enough, so I called Caesar Smith. Only, only then you came home. Honey, you couldn't kill anybody. But I did. I and, did. And you couldn't bring anybody back to life either. Look, look, baby. Mother's downstairs no. right now getting breakfast. And no. Kevin's there, too. And I'm here. So you see, you didn't kill anybody. You just had a bad dream. No, it was real. I did it. Now you get out of bed right now. Put on your robe and come downstairs and we'll all have a nice big breakfast. Okay? He went out of the room and I got out of bed and I put on a robe just to please him because I knew Kevin and Mother were lying dead in the kitchen. But I, I went downstairs anyway. Come and sit down, Ellen. Pancakes. Get them while they're hot. Somebody pass the maple syrup, please. You feeling better, dear? Here's the syrup, Kevin. It must have been some dream. Well, I've had dreams like that. 
Scared me half to death. Oh. You want to talk about it, dear? Sometimes that helps. Well, I don't think she wants to talk about it right now. Oh, well, maybe later. Eat your pancakes, Helen, and drink a nice glass of cold milk. Kevin, pour Helen a nice glass of cold milk. Here. Have some milk. Drink the milk, honey. Do you good. It was so silly. Because I knew they were dead. They just sat there talking all this dumb talk when I knew they couldn't talk because I had killed them and they were dead. I hadn't been able to save them because Daddy had walked in at just the wrong moment and I'd tried to kill him to keep him from knowing and then he had tried to kill me and... Of course, I couldn't have that. I... Here they were, just jabbering away as though nothing had happened. Oh, Helen, guess who called up this morning just before you came downstairs, dear? Who? Mrs. Masters. Masters? Yes, Billy Masters' mother. Mm. Creepy old Billy Masters. Now, none of that, Kevin. What did she want? Well, she wanted to tell me and wanted me to tell you that Billy's quite sick, dear. Mm. What's that? Billy's sick? Yeah. It happened quite suddenly. It seems he had a cold. Of course, they didn't pay much attention to that. Billy's always getting cold. But it hung on and hung on. And then yesterday, the doctor said it might be influenza. He wasn't sure. Then last night, in the middle of the night, he got much worse. And they called the doctor, and he said it was pneumonia. Pneumonia? Well, they have penicillin now. Yes, but there's a certain kind of pneumonia that doesn't respond to penicillin or any other kind of drug. And they're afraid that's the kind that Billy's got. Well, I sure hope not. Where are you going, Helen? Upstairs. But what about your pancakes? I'll leave her alone. Let her do what she wants. Oh, dear, she didn't even drink her milk. I got dressed in a hurry. I knew I had to do something and do it quick. It was bad enough that I'd killed my mother and my brother and almost killed my father, but now Billy Masters was going to die, too. They'd catch me. They'd put me in jail for a million years. Where are you going, Helen? Out. Have you picked up your room? They simply didn't understand. None of them did. I was a black murderer, and they didn't even know it. Nobody knew it but me. And just possibly, Caesar Smith. Come in. I've been waiting for you. I thought you'd be waiting. Sit down, my dear. Thank you. Now. How did it go? You mean about... The hex, the curse, the blast. Has it taken effect? Oh, yes. Let's see. The young man's name was... Billy, wasn't it? Billy Masters. Oh, yes. And? And he's very sick. Oh? Well, he brought it on himself, you know. You do know that, don't you? When he upset you, he brought it on himself. But he may die. Oh, I don't think so. Yes. I wouldn't have thought you had so much power. I killed my brother. Oh, surely not. And my mother, and I tried to kill my father. Don't you remember? I told you all of this on the telephone. You did? When? Last night. Just when last night? I don't know. I, I got home around 10 o'clock and I put the hex on Billy and and then after that I ruined Kevin's bicycle and, and then I killed him and my mother. Now, my dear. I called you because I was sorry I'd done it. I talked to you. So what did I say? I... I don't know exactly. I don't remember because my father came in and I, I tried to kill him, but he, he wouldn't. I, I, I couldn't. I... Which? He wouldn't or you couldn't? I, for, I forget how it was. Your occult powers are not sufficiently developed, my dear. That's why I'm here. I want you to, you know, like you did before, produce the altered state of consciousness. I don't want Billy Masters to die. It's too late to do anything about the others, but I don't want Billy Masters to die. We went through the ritual again. I felt the power coming back. And when I left his house, the words were still ringing in my ears. I am youth. I am beauty. I am that truly remarkable human being, myself, a precious thing to be, separate and unique. I am a goddess. By that time, I was at Billy Master's house. And his mother let me in to see him. Helen, I'm, uh, I'm really sorry about the dance Saturday night. Oh, Billy, really don't even think about that. No, but I, I'm really sorry. You're going to be all right now. I know it. 
I've got to go home now because your mother said I shouldn't stay more than a minute, but I want you to know, Billy, you're going to get well. I still had my power. I could still feel it in my veins. I was that remarkable human being, myself, a precious thing to be, separate and unique, a goddess, yes, absolutely. As soon as I got home, I went up to my room. Oh, great Piran. Oh, great Arch Druid. Take back the curse I placed on Billy Masters. Let him be well. Let him recover. Let him not die. Let him take me to the dance. Helen? Let him... I have some news for you, Helen. Mrs. Masters just phoned. Billy's much better. His temperature has gone down. It's not normal yet. But... Oh, my goodness. Why don't you ever pick up your room? It looks so sad. I'll do it later. Mrs. Masters said she thinks you're coming to see Billy. Did him a lot of good. Oh, gracious, what a mess. Oh, both you children, you're so untidy. Look, I said I'll do it. Well, at least I'll hang up your dressing gown. What's the good of buying you pretty things? If you just... Throw them on the floor. I told you time and again, hang them up the minute you take them. What's this? What? What's what? In the pocket. It's a bottle of sleeping pills. What are they doing in your pocket? You don't take sleeping pills. I, I took one last night. Oh, now, I don't like your taking sleeping pills. Helen, you didn't just take one. Why, what, this bottle is empty, is it? I'm certainly going to speak to your father about this. I thought he only took a sleeping pill now and then, but if he's been taking them every night. Well, I'll soon put a stop to that. Now, please, finish picking up your room and then come downstairs and help me decide what to have for dinner. I get so tired of deciding what to have night after night. <laughs> it was weird listening to her carry on like that about all those trivial things. She didn't know I had the power of life and death over all of them. Even Billy Masters. I thought maybe if he's well enough by Saturday I'd go to the dance with him and wear my new beige dress with the black velvet butterflies. Then I'll start making plans for my career. I'll go to New York and I'll become an actress. After all, I am that truly remarkable human being, myself, separate and unique. I am a goddess. It's a marvelous thing to feel that you are young and beautiful and a truly remarkable human being able to command the world? At least I guess it is. Later on, it's apt to be painful to discover that your power is not quite so great as you'd once felt it to be, that you cannot pronounce people dead, that they too have strengths of their own, that they persist in living even after you have killed them. And when they do, in truth, die in their own way and time, you do not have the power to bring them back to life. A painful discovery, but still a necessary one, if you live long enough to make it. I'll be back shortly. There is one small part of Helen's incantation that I find to be of value. And that is where she says... I am that truly remarkable human being, myself, separate and unique. For I believe that each of us is a remarkable human being, a particular set of genes that is duplicated nowhere else. Each of us is absolutely unique, and each of us is separate from every other set of genes, every other remarkable human being. The travail of life is learning how to overcome that separateness and at the same time to respect it. 
which is why life is hard. Our cast included Morgan Fairchild, Mary Jane Higby, Bob Caliban, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Yes. Uh, I have a coin here, and I want you to look at it. Yes. Well? Hmm, interesting. Yes, I thought so. This is a Washington 25-cent piece. They were first struck in 1932, the bicentennial of Washington's birth. The obverse is the face of George Washington. Yes, I know. I the reverse know. is the spread eagle. Yes, sir, but the... originally and until 1963, they were made of silver. Well, what I want to know... Now, is... however, they consist of a copper-silver alloy. Is it counterfeit? Oh, no, no, never. This is from the Denver Mint, I can tell. Yes, sir, but the, but the date... What about the date? Well, read it. I read it. That's all you can say? What do you want me to say? This coin was minted in 1986. How can you say it was minted in 1986? Yes, interesting point. Should I say it will be minted in 1986? Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and x -Lax. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant... Dreams? Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.